What's up, guys? Hey. I'm. No, wait. You gotta say table nuts first. I could just say, hey, y'all. We can hey, lean into ourselves. Oh my like, gosh. I, say I tell you what. Hey, y'all. Welcome to Dim Dim Dum 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 Table Nuts. Hey, you're. Diggity Dippy Doo. Welcome to Table Nuts. I won't ever open my mouth patch like right in here. Rigger Dig Burp. Rigger Braid and Perfume. Rigger Perfumes. Air Dim Zipper Games. Yeah. Hey, welcome to Table Nuts. I'm Doolin. And I'm Jash. And today, we would like to review for you guys a game called Four Humors by Adam's Apple Games. This is a game from Charlie McCarran and it is an area control bluffing game, which are two things that I never thought would actually go together. Right. And uh, this game somehow finds a way to do it. Essentially, you're trying to win specific areas around the kingdom and you'll see this big map board that will uh, be represented by a number of different colors and then it, within those colors be represented by a number of different like cities and air, like castles and stuff like that. Your goal is to win certain ones in order to fulfill these public objectives that everyone at the table will be going for. There's only four of them and the moment that you win them other things happen as well but uh, you'll be pushing for those and the way that you do those is by blind bidding on these scene cards that represent each place. Everyone starts with a hand of four randomly drawn tokens or potions. Yeah. Each scene card has a number of citizens where the tokens can be placed. Each citizen has two types of tokens that can be used. Like for example, sword heart, sword hourglass, etc. When two scene cards fill, you go down the list checking for win condition in order of priority. First, you check for a single sword if there are zero or two or more swords, next we would check for two or more hearts. Then after that, we would check for two books. If by then there's still no winner, but there's one book token, the book person who placed the book token takes the adjacent region. Regardless of that, the hourglasses would still take that region. After you determine winner, the people take their tokens and place them on the map board representing that scene card's location. And depending on whether or not that fulfills an objective for you or not, determines what happens next. This game, first and foremost, we have to shout out the incredible art and the, the components and the, just the love that clearly got poured into this game. It's weird to me. I know that Adam's Apple had a great year with Planet Unknown, but Planet Unknown, I love for not its art. <laughs> it's, its art is not the best, whereas this game, it's just beautiful and yes. fun and and like the colors pop and like the, the cartoony art like just pulled me in. Um, it's enough that when I saw it, before I even knew anything about it, I was like, I wanna, I wanna know what this game is about. But on top of that, Beyond the art, I think this game is just incredible. I love both area control and bluffing, and to throw those in together, like I love the hidden information and then the reveal phase is just like, ah! To heighten that, uh, the game encourages you to lie, to table talk a bunch, to say, I don't think that you anybody can play this specific token here because if you do, then Max is going to win and we can't let Max win because Max just shouldn't ever win. Yes, exactly. Um, <laughs> I, I love that because it all leads into this moment where everyone has said what they what they placed, but then we find out if anybody lied, and that's just so fun. And because there are instances where multiple people can win, it adds another layer of that where it's like, okay, did this person place the thing that's going to make them win with me? Or mm -hmm. are they just saying that because they place the thing that's better than mine and it's going to trump me? And One of my favorite moments, I think, actually came from our, like, our first play all together, all four places had sword and I think the, uh, no, the last one, which is the oh, phlegmatic, right. so like the hourglass. So it's either all of us are going to win it or only one of us, or maybe two people play swords and one person or a few people place the hourglass. We had all said that we were placing hourglasses and everyone placed swords. <laughs> and no one won it. And it was just a really fun moment of all of us looking around and being like, yeah, we all lied. <laughs> we, we hardcore lied about that. My favorite cards are the ones that have two people because then it's literally the true prisoner's dilemma because every single card with two people has an instance where both people can play things to where they both win, mm -hmm. but they normally both have swords on them too. Yeah. So it's like we can both play swords and kill each other. And it's like, okay, is he gonna do that? Well, I gotta play a sword because if not, then he's gonna play a sword and win. So I might as well cancel out his win. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite things as well is that there is no private objectives. 
Um, everything that everyone is going for is only four points. Like, and it's all four of the public objectives you want to try to fulfill. And that limited amount of scoring helps me know exactly what everyone needs at the table. And that helps me know like which cards, which scene cards some people are gonna play heavily on, and which scene cards some people might not. And everyone also knows yours. So when they're looking across at the table uh, at you and they're saying, oh, I'm playing a heart here because I wanna win with you. You know, like for some of them, they don't wanna win with you because if they let you win it, you're gonna be winning. And so um, knowing that uh, it, it's it's almost like a heavier bluffing game than typical bluffing games. And I think that that's really, really fun. Getting into a few of our dislikes though, things that we think the game um, missed just a bit. There's not a lot, I will say. Uh, just to gush about this game a bit more, both of us really enjoyed this game. We don't know why it's as underrated as it is, but I will say, uh, we ran into a bit of a snag when it came to in-game stuff. There's only four objectives, and multiple people can get those objectives by the end of the game. Um, Jash had it. Right. Uh, you got all four. You were actually the only one who got all four, but I was very close, and I think Max was very close as well. Uh, poor Kenny only scored one <laughs> point. Uh, but we both had three, and if we had both, like if two people had gotten four, it then goes off of, well, who has the most tokens on the board? And it, it, it would just feel bad if you, had played a dominant game, did what you were supposed to do, did what the game told you to do, and then you ended up losing. Um, so I think that is a little rough. Yeah, so similar to what you were saying, I was the one who got the four objectives, but that's not what ended the game. So like, I could have gotten those four objectives, raced to get them first, and still lost, because the game ended dependent on um, the side areas that we had to fill mm -hmm. that triggered once people got the objectives. Yeah. So I could have rushed somehow, magically <laughs> rushed all four objectives really early on and still been playing for a while. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that sort of de-incentivizes that rushing to get there at the end because yeah. you can't you can't complete it first and then win. The only other thing that I thought of, and this kind of applies to all area control, area majority games in general, but I don't think, it, it says it plays one to six. I don't think this would play well at two and I really wouldn't even want to play it much at three. I think it would play better at those higher player counts, like four or five. Uh, three might be okay. Playing at four was an incredible experience. Yes. I love this game at four. This also leads into our final point, which is who do we think this game would be for? Who, who should buy this game? And uh, my first thought immediately is maybe not if you're like wanting a heavy area control game, but let's say you're a big fan of bluffing and big fan of, fan of hidden information games. A lot of those games tend to lean towards the party side. Um, and so this flexes the bluffing muscles in a much more gamey way where it feels a lot more complex. It feels like a real like heavy, like not heavy, but like medium weight board game, but with bluffing at it as a central mechanic. And so, I would have never guessed that these two things would work well, right. but I think it works incredibly well. So if you're a fan of poker and you're a fan of bluffing and you, you tend to just buy the party versions of those, this would be great for like, I guess the next level, right? Right, like if, if you want bluffing and yeah. bluffing plus. I'd say that this would be good for people who really like those sudden excitement moments of like, gotcha, like, mm -hmm. okay, I think he said that he was going to do this. We're going to win this together. I'm going to get the spot I need. You flip it over and it's like, oh, he put a sword. Yeah. He's had a sword there the entire time. So now I just lose. Mm -hmm. That is our review. Adam's Apple Games, thank you so much for sending this to us. It is a great game and yeah, honestly the sleeper hit of the year for me really yeah i mean stay tuned I, it might be out by now but in jash's top games of 2022 let's it's just somewhere in the, in the top 10 top 10 for jash so um and it was close up for me as well uh but great game go try it out or at least look into it more if this at all uh it piqued your interest so but thanks for watching we hope you guys have a great rest of your day we'll see you later bye